Nobody knows how many springs exist in Texas. Basic information on most springs just doesn't exist, but that is changing, one spring at a time. pH 7.40, specific conductance 486. Well, the purpose or objective of our study is primarily to gather some baseline information on springs. Um, this includes the location, the, the biotic community, what, what we find there, that being the fish and bugs and salamanders, plants. And we're getting some water samples as well as discharge of the springs. This is an acoustic Doppler current profiler and for 40 seconds it will measure the velocity and then we do it a minimum of 20 times across a stream. Currently in the state there's not a lot of information on springs with the exception of the major springs that we have in the state. San Marcos, Comal, Barton Springs. There's a good amount of data collected on those, but many of the smaller springs, especially as you head further out west that feed some of those major rivers, there just hasn't been much data collected on those, primarily because the majority of them are on private property. Such springs play an increasingly important role as climate patterns fluctuate. Springs provide the base flows to our rivers and streams and creeks during dry times. They are what keep them flowing when there is no rainfall. So for instance, during this last year, 2006, we had a relatively dry year and it was a, a pretty good drought. M many of our creeks and rivers would not have had water in them if it wasn't for the springs that feed them. So they are sustaining in-stream, riparian and aquatic habitats all the way down to the mouth of the bays and estuaries. I've heard estimates that the, the flow from Comal and San Marcos Springs, they can account for as much as 70 to 80 percent of the flow of the Guadalupe at its mouth during times of drought. So while these springs are exceptional in size and not all springs are this large, the accumulation of many smaller springs in a river basin, it supports that entire length of the river during these dry times and they're very important. A stable spring provides a very productive habitat certain plants and animals found there can reveal the condition of the spring. The purpose of collecting the fish and the insects, what biota we find there can tell us something about the health of that aquatic ecosystem. So uh, there's sort of a scoring system based upon what you find there that can tell us whether or not it's healthy or degraded. As degradation or impacts to an aquatic ecosystem rise, generally you'll have less diversity. So the more diversity we find in an ecosystem, that tells us something about the health of it. This is a good, healthy spring that flows year round. It's got good water, we find fish in it, and that's a very good indicator that you've got water flowing year round. Good, healthy, clean water. He's right, oh, you see him, he's wiggling around, he just yep, shot up there. there. He, there he went. One group in particular that we find generally in abundance in the springs is the caddisflies or the trichopterans. They're a group that's largely recognized as being a good indicators. Caddisflies could be divided into two categories. There's free living and case making caddisflies. Certain species will use sticks and smaller pieces of leaves where you use sand grains or small gravel and their cases are in various shapes and sizes. What you can see here is some tree leaves. He's come in and cut a little hole, and then that's what he made his little house out of. You can see that it's a little round thing on top, one on top of another. He spins that together, and then he lives inside of his case. Some insects you'll find around almost any body of water are dragonflies and damselflies. They are not necessarily a, an indicator of aquatic ecosystem health, 
but they are quite common in the springs and there's a very diverse number of these organisms that we find in the springs. And because many of the springs are very remote and they may be the only water supply around for miles in many cases, they often harbor unique species which adds some body of knowledge to the distribution and range of these critters. We collect, measure, and enumerate the specimens we see in the field. We only keep a few voucher specimens to bring back to the lab to verify our ID. This one belongs to the family less today. I can tell that right off the bat. In the lab, I was examining some damselflies and damselfly larvae. We were looking at its labium, which is basically its, its lower lip, and more specifically, we're looking at its palpal hooks. That's one of the ways we ID the guys. You have to open up their mouth and you're looking for the number of hairs on the inside of their lower lip. It can be that minute of a detail that you look for to identify these guys. Most of this research would not be possible without the help of private landowners. The cooperation of private landowners is absolutely essential to our project. You know, 95% of the state, I believe, is privately owned, and so that includes the vast majority of springs in the state. In the past, some landowners feared that endangered species might be found, but that is changing. Typically, these landowners have that endangered species on their land because they've done the right things. Having that endangered species on their land gives them another level of protection. They've got federal law behind them protecting that species and the habitat they live on. Obviously, the habitat's compatible with the way of life of that farmer or rancher because that's what they've been doing all this time. We actually had people that said, you don't want to bring those, those guys out here. If they find an endangered species, you won't be able to do anything with your land. And my wife and I actually looked at each other and thought, how perfect would that be? There are some changes to what you can and can't do, uh, or at least potentially there are, to what can and can't be done if endangered species are dependent upon the, on your land. That's, to some people, maybe a problem. They couldn't necessarily bulldoze it and put a subdivision on it. But to others, they think that's just great. That preserves that land and preserves the quality of that habitat that's, that's available and, and there for all of our future. We've loved Chad and the guys coming out doing all the measurements, and we welcome it. I feel very fortunate just to have access to get to go see many of these springs. So each time, it's like I, I just wonder what I'm going to find. See? But th these guys are a, an indicator of good water quality. If you, find, right. if you find these somewhere, then you can be pretty sure your water's not, not too bad. <laughs> if we're not working with these landowners and, and helping them appreciate these resources and conserve these resources, then we're not doing our job to help protect these springs. Mm -hmm.